as woodland photographers are often preoccupied with this desire for mist and fog and for good reason really because it really does make our job a little bit easier it adds depth and layers um, and apart from anything else it's just a wonderful experience to be out in those atmospheric ethereal conditions i mean you can't beat it when the woodland is still damp and misty um, not just in terms of visually but in sounds and smells as well however with time and as my work has evolved I like to think matured and hopefully refined as well and my connection to woodland has deepened I find myself the vast majority of the time although my social media feed might say otherwise but I do find myself uh, shooting non-misty conditions a lot because that's what we have and the thing is is that I make images that I really like and I don't always publish them and that's a shame because sometimes the kind of much quieter and much more complex images they just get lost on social media they're not really intended for that platform um, not so bad on YouTube if you can zoom in and sh show a bit more detail but ultimately they require the viewer to spend a bit more time with them have that lingering gaze perhaps see it as a print um, and I love making images like that but also sometimes you can make images and it's definitely getting to that time of year now where you can achieve this where you can make images which look as if that they've got that soft misty light but in actual fact it's very clear so today we've had a pretty clear day there's pretty clear day there's blue sky above me now the sun has dipped down behind the hill on the opposite valley side the light is extremely soft I've taken some images already because the, we very quickly start to lose the light it's getting a bit dark now but what you might see behind me here is some beautiful shapes we've got oak trees in the foreground then change to alder trees which are down in the the damp valley floor what that is giving is a very limited color palette we don't really have the autumn colors coming through yet but we've got these slightly yellowing oak leaves offering a frame to the top we've got some hazel down in the base and then just emerging from that soft base is all these beautiful shapes from the alders and the alders very limited in their color a much darker softer green but also what's happening is that valley light is just coming down and making all those alder leaves very bright very white same with the trunks as well and that's offering the contrast to the backlit leaves of the oak and therefore giving that difference in light difference in color in a very soft way that makes it look slightly misty but it's perfectly clear and it just works um, I love it um, and but this image apart from the softness is very much about the shape I just love that anchor of that big oak tree and all these wiggles and the relationships between the the alders and branches encroaching from corners as well giving this feeling of height just like we're floating through the canopy I love those types of images there's no floor there's no sky it's just floating amongst the trees so yeah see what you make of that I really like it actually as a as a composition um, I hope it comes across as intended on the video right it's probably going to be dark so this is going to be quite a short video uh, if it gets too short then I'll talk a little bit more in the office when I get back and perhaps show some examples from the past as well to illustrate exactly what I'm talking about probably can't tell on camera but it's actually getting quite dark in the woods now I keep hearing strange noises it's probably 
squirrels knocking acorns from the treetops. They keep looking around and what's that? Um, but actually in the valley there where it opens up, there's still quite a nice ambient glow. So I'm still taking pictures, uh, still reveling in the, the stillness. And uh, you know, this place just feels absolutely deserted right now, which is fantastic. I think as that my connection deepens with these places, I'm wanting to make images which don't necessarily speak for my inner world, um, but say something about the trees. And I want to show all their different facets. And there's much, much more to woodland than the atmosphere that mist and fog provides because they provide atmosphere in, in other ways as well, whether it's just in ambient light, in the rain or when a burst of sunlight comes through, you know, whatever appeals to you. But I'm trying to be a voice for the trees as well, if that makes sense. Um, and I'm sure they'd want to show themselves off in all sorts of different weather, lights, conditions, colors, shades, etc. There's a lot of character here. We've got these arching branches, a lot of deadfall. This is what I like about woodland is that it often gives that sense of time standing still um, or a place where time collects. And yet you come into these places and just think that, well, it's been here for decades, nothing's gonna change that much, but it changes dramatically, often not for the better, but sometimes these changes, whether it's just with age or storms, and you get deadfall, it presents new opportunities. And sometimes the way something has fallen, it just opens up a pocket of light which wasn't there before. And because of all the deadfall here, the light's just gathering in that open space, highlighting all that decay. You know, photographers, we love decay. Um, but I just like the way that we've got this contrast of darkness of the oak tree on the right hand side, and then it goes to a some very light pale branches. I can't really tell from here under this light. I'm gonna guess that it's an ash tree. So it just gives that contrasting softness, that feeling of lightness, and that's just sandwiched between the different green foliage and the green of the oak trees on the opposite bank. So yeah, just perfectly still, ambient light, um, and just a different feel to perhaps what you sometimes see from me. Yes, contrary to popular belief, I spend a huge amount of time in the woods under conditions which most of us tend to experience on a regular day. It's a good job I know where I'm going because it's getting really quite dark and spooky now. So what I'm going to do is finish off this video in the office and show some more examples of images which kind of look like they've got that thin misty quality but are actually taken in completely clear conditions. And autumn is the perfect time to kind of observe and make use of that effect as well. So uh, I'll see you back indoors and I need to try and find my way back to the car. That footage was recorded on the 16th of October, but early the next morning, I headed straight up to Scotland to run a thoroughly enjoyable 10 day workshop. So no doubt those scenes are looking a little bit different today, but what I'll do is show some images that were made at this time of year and into winter, which helped to demonstrate this illusion of softening mist. So first up is a favorite from 2019, which has 
often been misinterpreted as being misty, but this cool soft backdrop is nothing more than a shaded hillside soaking up the coolness from the clear blue sky. As I said in the on location footage, this time of year is a great opportunity to work with colour contrast as the warm tones of autumn contrast with the cool shadows at the beginning and end of days. What else has helped here? Well, three key things really. Firstly, white balance. It's really important to let those cool shadows stay cool. I always shoot on the cooler side at this time of year so that the different hues of yellow, red and orange are separated. Also, consistency in texture and tone. The backdrop of this superb oak tree is incredibly complex, but its consistency in tone allows its intricacy to seemingly merge together. Thirdly, reflected light and backlight. The timing was just right, so that the leaves were softly backlit, but the evening sun hit the warmth of the trees behind me and reflected that light to softly illuminate the detail in the contrasting warmth. That was from my local area, but let's go to Scotland and an image that I made last autumn, a location that I actually revisited just a couple of weeks ago with some clients. But unlike the previous image, this day was cloudy, damp and clear. The, the beauty of Scotland actually is the distant mountains, which in this case was covered in pine trees, giving consistency to the backdrop. A little moisture in the air helped to soften the far distance to a light texture and contrasting coolness. The hillside here slopes fairly steeply to an area, <laughs> to an area I like to call the Tussocks of Terror, a real kind of ankle breaking territory. The slope helps these trees just to stand proud and be admired above the complexity below. As you can see, one of the key components here is contrasting colour. The pop of those softly backlit autumn leaves just allows the foreground to stand proud of the comparably cooler and softer backdrop. But let's have a look at something a little bit different for when we move a bit closer into winter. This slightly creepy and decaying mass of downy birch is under very flat light and yet again on a completely clear day. Through the mass of intricate birch branches you can just make out where the green of the ground ends as it falls away to reveal nothing but the bare winter branches of birch trees on the opposite valley side. At an aperture of f8 the distant trees have softened into a kind of slightly magenta blob. The contrasting colour is only subtle, so I use this limited colour palette and some slightly desaturated greens to capture some of the mood of this really quite unusual location. And you can see the backdrop starts to reveal some of its inconsistencies in this panoramic scene, but the general effect still works. Very briefly, let's come back to my local woods and take a look at an image I call Embers of Autumn. So this was made in late November as we start to see the marcescent leaves of the oak and some of the yellow leaves of the hazel still linger. So this isn't a distant valley side backdrop, but relatively near trees in a valley opening that has been touched by a bit of hoarfrost. That touch of frost almost has the appearance of drifting smoke to my eyes. It's a beautiful combination with the hot embers of the fading season. You'll have noticed that there's a general theme here of omitting the sky. Including the sky is certainly easier, in actual mist, but I typically use opposite hillsides for that fake mist, so to speak. They don't have to be distant mountains, they can be near and complex, but hopefully with a degree of consistency. Before I go, I'm pleased to say that the calendar I produce with Trees for Life is now in stock and has been shipped as we speak. I don't, I don't actually have a copy myself yet, but by all accounts, it's very nice indeed. And I have to say, at $12.99, it is an absolute bargain, a really good way to support the recovery of nature in the Scottish Highlands, and just a great way to support both art and nature. So please take a look at your support is massively appreciated. But that's it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it and found some value in the discussion. I'll be back very soon. I have some more episodes in the pipeline, but until then, thanks again and see you soon.